So that, boys and girls, is a Bourbon Trace whiskey barrel. Now you may have seen me pick these up a few weeks ago. Uh, Martin acquired them for me from a chap called John Bailey on the Brewers Professional Group on Facebook. And when they arrived, I wasn't too sure because um, they were a little bit dirty and uh, the stamp on them was 20 years old actually, 20, uh, 2000 I think it was, so they're 22 years old. So I wasn't sure, so I messaged the guy who they came from, John Bailey, and he assured me that they're recently emptied and all I need to do is fill them up with hot water and let them sit with that water in there until I need them. So I took it upon myself to find a little bit of information on the interwebs about cleaning them up. So on the outside, I've just hit all of the metal hoops with a little bit of stainless steel wire wool. And then I've just used a nail brush on the wood and I've washed all the dirt and debris off the outside. And they've come up really nice. And then I spent five minutes on the welder this morning fabricating this little fella. So it's just very quick and easy to do. It's just a piece of threaded bar and I've welded it into a T-shape on one end there. And then on this end, I've got a, a 60 by 4.5 mil. I would have gone bigger if I had any in stock, but I didn't. A stainless steel wood screw. And then I've just got a little bit of 40 mil, is it 40? Scaffolding pipe to make a puller. So I just screwed that into the top of the bung and a couple of sharp short sharp wax and indeed the bung came out this one you'll notice is a lot sweeter if I pop it in the focal point now one of them I pulled out just looked like it had a few little spots of mildew on it this one's clean as a whistle and it smells delicious you could chew it nice color as well nice little bit of purpley coloring on there so I think with the one that looked like it had probably got a little bit of mildew inside, I've picked up some information from Northwest Barrel Company or something like that. And they've got a little guide on how to look after your barrels and you can get them to last up to a hundred years, believe it or not. I'm not sure, I'll just grab a piece of paper. So this info is available on the internet at northeastbarrelcompany.com and it's best, the best barrel cleaning and storage methods. That's all it is. And uh, preparing your barrel, it says uh, make sure you keep it wet. That's the most important thing. And then it says getting rid of mold, so it's obviously a common thing. Uh, the water rinse is the best way to go. If your barrels have a weird stench, they don't smell. Discoloration or discoloration Try using sodium percarbonate or sodium carbonate. Well, we've got sodium percarbonate in stock. And uh, it says don't do it often, but just once or twice, you know, if you've got like a, an awkward looking, um, I don't know, an awkward smelling aroma coming out of your cask or barrel or something like that, it's probably the way to go. And just fill it up with um, a tablespoon of sodium percarbonate per gallon of water and fill up most of the barrel, I'll probably fill it to the brim and then leave it in there to soak and then rinse it three times and then fill it up with hot water and then leave to store. Now you can fill up with cold water but they recommend hot water because it swells the wood better and seals any gaps and then there's some storage info. Anyway I'll let you go to the website yourself and have a look. As I said it's northeastbarrelcompany.com so having looked inside that barrel, and you've just seen a little clip of it there, you can see there's some liquid inside. It smells, Gemma said it smells like nail varnish or nail polish. I think it smells of whiskey. And it looks like the char on the inside is in one piece. I've got in there with like a torch and had a better look. The camera doesn't have the angle to kind of, you know, tilt the eyeball, so to speak, and have a look at the insides. But it looks perfect. and all the chars intact it looks healthy and shiny and there's no obvious signs of anything going wrong in there so I'm happy with them I'm gonna fill them up with hot water today and the reason I'm doing it today is it's Friday I've brewed four times this week and 
Usually we start on a Monday, but we start on Tuesday this week. And at the end of the brew day, I'm going to have a HLT full of hot water that I'm not going to use. So that gives me a perfect opportunity to pull that HLT water out and we'll stick it into a couple of these barrels at the end of the day. Hopefully we can fill all four of them. Um, it's a 600 litre HLT so I might have to heat some water up as we go, but we'll see. Anyway, this one here, I'll show you it off the tripod. This has been cleaned down this morning and it's a beautiful piece of workmanship. I absolutely love it. You can see the uh, the info stamped onto the end has come out really quite nicely. Mash number two, Buffalo Trace Distillery. And if we compare that, like these are all drying out now, these hoops. So if we compare how this looks with how these look over here, you can see there is a little bit of difference, but it's all superficial and it will come off with a little bit of patience and scrubbing. My only concern are these top bungs. So I obviously want to lay these down and have them stored on their side. And it does worry me if that's gonna be an issue or not. I'm probably not gonna put the top bungs back in when we do come to fill them with beer and I'll pop an airlock on the top and that'll prevent any pressure building up and popping those out. So we should be safe on that front. But I'm gonna roll this one out of the way, stand it on the side, allow the outside of it to dry a bit. And we're gonna pull another one of these in and carry on scrubbing. I'm absolutely tempting fate with this. So let's get down on the barrel <laughs> and see if we can pull it off. Hold on a second. Oh Jesus, there we go. So I've screwed in my little threaded bar and we've got the weight. Oh, first time. I thought the curse of the camera was gonna ruin it for us. Lovely jubbly. Let's have a look on the inside of this. Look at that. I think that would pass as a relatively clean Oh yeah, and sweet smelling bung. I need TP for my bunghole, is that what it is? <laughs> oh, that's an old MTV gag. You might not get that if you're too young. So we're in the middle of chilling down the best bitter that we've brewed today. And we're filing in all the water coming out of the plate chiller into the cask. Let's just brighten that up a second. There we go, so you can see we've got four to fill, that's 600 litres in total. I think we might be able to do it today. Fingers crossed we've got enough water. But I'm just going to fill them up until they overflow and then we'll just pop that bung back on top and leave them to soak for a little while. Fingers crossed, no leaks anywhere yet from what I can see. So that is a good sign. So I'm not sure how we managed it, but Gem and I managed to stand this barrel up because it was leaking out of one of the shives and I don't have enough water to uh, fill it up again. So I wanted to save the water that's in there. It's not leaking anywhere else, which is a good thing, but it was just leaking through here. I made a little peg and I tried to hammer a peg into it but the damage was already done and the big shive at the top was split. So the others look fine. That one's no leaky. Uh, this one did have a slight leak, but I managed to just tap it in and it kind of sealed perfectly. And that one, as you can see, looks fine as well. So I'll show you the shive that's come out. And I've just grabbed my tripod as well, because I'm gonna set you up on the tripod over here and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna cut a new one. So this is what's come out. It doesn't look like oak to me, but I'm not sure. So as you can see, it's that's where I thought there was, there was a hole and indeed it went straight through. I imagine that's where they put some sort of pulling tool in there to get this out. 
but as you can see it's cracked along the sides so all I've done is I've got myself a little bit of hardwood it's actually the timber that we use to make the bar in the pub and I've drawn around the outside diameter of this I should have perhaps gone a little bit bigger than that because it was a tight fit in fact I'll do that in a second and then I've put an angle on the um, bandsaw so I can run around the outside diameter of this hopefully incorporating an angle onto this block of wood as well thus giving us a tighter fitting shive and that angle allows us to get it in the hole so to speak so I'm probably just going to run around making sure I stay well on the outside of this line that should give us enough clearance viewfinder there so it's slightly conical shaped and obviously it's got quite a few rough little edges but that's no problem I've got a little sander over here and I can do the same thing by setting the angle of the table to give me the same kind of angle almost as what we've got on there and I'll just go around and do the same thing now and there's the finished article just a uh, little bit of handwork there to finish it off I'm hoping that we're round enough and indeed we are large enough I've just kept outside the line there so fingers crossed that should you see here that should give us enough space but I think that's nice and smooth and it certainly looks relatively cylindrical or conical to me if not a little bit offset but only one way to find out So the moment of truth, our steamy hole, oh yeah, I think just rotating it a little bit, we can kind of find, yeah, it is a little bit out of, out of square, so maybe I should just sand a little bit off of, maybe just this edge here and we'll come back and give it another fit. It just seems a little bit wider around that section there than it is around that section and you can kind of feel it just a touch. So I got some cheapy little calipers and just focus down on the workpiece. I've got this little set of calipers to go over the edge there, look and kind of at the widest point we had about 80 mil so we've got 79.6 79.9 so we can squeeze that in 79.6 79.6 yeah still 79.6 so we're actually in we're within 0.3 oh no 79.9 there we go look there's an 80 is that right we're in 0.4 of a mil I think that's close enough for me so let's get down on here and give it another try oh that looks a lot better in fact it looks wonderful oh look at that it's stuck in there already so I'm gonna hammer this home and uh, 
hopefully that'll be problem solved. So I've got a leather mallet here and that feels nice and tight. I don't think that's coming out for love nor money. So I'm going to see if we can lay it back down again now. I'm doing this on my own, so it's a bit of a risky business. I'll zoom out just in case it all goes Pete Tong like. You never know. It's heavy. It's a full 200 kilo, kilos plus, plus the weight of the barrel. Oh, no chance. I've got no chance of doing that on my own. Oh, or has he? Really? Right then, steady! Oh, can't believe I did it. That was probably stupid and risky. But, whatever. So I'm trying to get it in a position where we can roll it up to this one. And the Shive will be at the top. About there, let's put that in there. Uh, well, we don't appear to be leaking, so I'm going to take this shive back out the top and top it back up with hot water. Looks like this shive's going to be the one that goes next. Too bad. Yeah, I'm pleased with how this has gone, actually. So let's get some hot water out of the tap this time. And let's top her up. And then what I've been doing just rocking it backwards and forwards gets the bubbles out but also any little floaty bits of um, you know the uh, char on the inside just gets them out as well right that's right up to the top let's pop that on and we're going to leave it overnight so that is as far as we go boys we have four casks or whiskey barrels if you like and they're all full of hot water and that's how they're going to stay for the evening and here you can see the little repair that I've done I think that's going to be fine it looks like as good as that one if you ask me and it's a hardwood it's not oak I think it's either ash or sycamore I think it's ash so I don't see ash being a problem not just a little bit of it like that anyway, considering the rest of the oak, uh, barrel is oak. But I didn't have any oak that was that thick. Very pleased, very pleased that they are not leaky. So I'm going to wrap it up boys. And we'll see you on another vlog because tomorrow we've got, yeah, most of you fellas coming over. The brew tubers et al. So we'll see you then and we'll see everyone else on the next vlog. Cheers.